Shalom, blessings in the name of Jesus Christ. My name is Miriam Rachel. Welcome, Sheep in the Garden. We need to get back to our study on Revelation. That's not helping at all. The sun's going down. There's nothing I can do. Oh, well, we'll just enjoy the time we have. We are in chapter 11 of Revelation in our faithful rainbow childhood Bible. Oh, I need two things. <laughs> Me. Father God, bless this time that we have together and send your Holy Spirit to speak to me and to speak to us, all of us. Pour out your love on this world, I pray, Father. Thank you. Thank you. In the name of Jesus. All right. Now we're ready to get going. <laughs> I was given a reed like a measuring rod and was told... Go and measure the temple of God and the altar and count the worshipers there. But exclude the outer court and do not measure it, because it has been given to the Gentiles. They will trample this on the holy city for 42 months, and I will give power to my two witnesses, and they will prophesy for 1260 days clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two lampstands that stand before the Lord of the earth. If anyone tries to harm them, fire comes from their mouths and devours their enemies. And we know these two um, witnesses to be Enoch and Elijah because of the book of Nicodemus and other books in the Dead Sea Scrolls. This is how anyone who wants to harm them must die. These men have the power to shut up the sky so that it will not rain during the time that they are prophesying. And they have power to turn the waters into blood and to strike the earth with every kind of plague as often as they want. Now when they have finished their testimony, the beast that comes up from the abyss will attack them and overpower and kill them. Their bodies will lie in the street of the great city, which is figuratively called Sodom, and Egypt, where also their Lord Jesus was crucified. For three and a half days, men from every people, tribe, language, and nation will gaze on their bodies and refuse them burial. Why are they, why are they going to be so mad at the two witnesses? Because they, they shut the rain up. They shut the skies up. They, they're causing plagues all over the earth. So, of course, they're not going to want to give them burial. Just leave them lay there, right? It's, uh, let, the, let the animals carry their carcasses off. I mean, you know, that's the worst thing you can do to a human body. However, the inhabitants of the earth will gloat over them and will celebrate by sending each other gifts because these two prophets had tormented these who live on the earth. And there's no other time in history that everybody all across the planet could have been sending gifts back and forth to each other, celebrating the exact same thing until now. The, uh, you know, thank you, Father, for the internet because what Satan had designed for his evil, God will use for good. Amen. But after three and a half days, a breath of life from God entered them. And they stood on their feet, and terror struck those who saw them. Hi, girls. Then they heard a loud voice from heaven saying to them, Come up here. And they went up to heaven in a cloud, while their enemies looked on. At that very hour, there was a severe earthquake, and a tenth of the city collapsed. Seven thousand people were killed in an earthquake, and the survivors were terrified and gave glory to the God of heaven. The second woe has passed. The third woe is coming soon. And we remember that after this, the last chapter, it was saying they were still worshiping their idols, and they were still um, giving glory to what we call aliens, right? But now they're starting to realize that, that they need to give glory to the God of heaven, and that's what they're doing. The seventh trumpet, verse 15 of chapter 11, the seventh angel sounded his trumpet, and there were loud voices in heaven which said, the kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and Yeshua HaMashiach, and he will reign forever and ever. Amen. And the 24 elders who were seated on their thrones before God fell on their faces and worshipped him, saying, 
We give thanks to you, Lord Yahuwah Almighty, who is and who was, because you have taken your great power and have begun to reign. The nations were angry, and your wrath has come. The time has come for judging the dead. The time has come for judging the dead. That's, you know, just, you know, we know this prophecy hasn't come true yet. <laughs> that time hasn't passed. <laughs> it's yet to come. It's, it's, it's at the door. And for rewarding your servants, the prophets, and your saints, and those who reverence your name. Amen. Both small and great. And for destroying those who destroy the earth. Then God's temple in heaven was opened, and within his temple was seen the ark of his covenant. And there came flashes of lightning, rumblings, peals of thunder, an earthquake, and a great hailstorm. Now this next chapter 12 talks about the woman and the dragon. And we all know that we saw, we saw the woman on uh, August 23rd, 2017. And um, we've seen the Bethlehem star twice since then, which also hasn't been seen since Jesus was on earth. So we're, this next chapter, we're living it. We're actually living this. What an honor to be alive right now. What an exciting time to be alive. A great and wondrous sign appeared in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun and with the moon under her feet and a crown of 12 stars on her head. She was pregnant and cried out in pain as she was about to give birth. Then another sign appeared in heaven, an enormous red dragon, and we know that as Planet X, Nib, you know, not Nibiru, but um, the nemesis that's with it, with this, with Nibiru. Oh. So this sign appeared in heaven, an uh, enormous red dragon with seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns on his heads. Um, those are talking about powers and principalities and also the powers of the world and um, the kingdoms of the world. And his tail, that is the representation of Satan having so much control over us. And his tail swept a third of the stars out of the sky and flung them to the earth. So we know that's what's coming next. Okay. We saw the sign in the sky. The, the stars falling is what's coming next. And then the dragon stood in front of the woman who was about to give birth so that he might devour her child the moment it was born. She gave birth to a son, a male child, who will rule all nations with an iron scepter. And we know that is Yeshua HaMashiach, right? And her child was snatched up to Yahuwah and to his throne. Amen. And the woman fled into the desert to a place prepared for her by God, where she might be taken care of for 1260 days. And I did the math on that one day, and I think it was, it came out to uh, 2021, something like that, I don't know. Anyway, there was war in heaven, Michael and his dragons fought against the dragon, and the dragon against his angels fought back, and we've been wondering, what's all these thundering, booming sounds coming from the sky, and the different wild sounds that people are recording? Okay, but Satan was not strong enough, and they lost their place in heaven. The great dragon was hurled down, that ancient serpent called the devil or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth, and his angels with him. So, <laughs> then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, so, because right now, um, they have their own heaven. Like, it's hell. It's not heaven like you and I think of it. But they have their own space in space, where, like, what we call outer darkness and he's even going to lose that. He's going to lose all of his real estate. And he will be utterly destroyed, as we know. Um, now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of Yahuwah and the authority of his Messiah. For the accuser of our brothers who accuses them before our God day and night has been hurled down. Do you understand what that means? That means that demons can no longer stand before God and accuse you. Right? Isn't that wonderful? They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. And we talked about this the other day. What did David do when he went after Goliath? He had those five smooth stones or four smooth stones in his pocket. He ran. He ran. Let us... By the word of our testimony, 
that that we did not love our lives so much as to shrink from death. Let us run towards what's coming. Not shrink from it, not hide from it. You know, I, I asked the father, I said, you know, I understand, I'm sick, but let me go down with my boots on. I want to I wanna go down with my boots on, praising God. Amen, right? Never shrink from death. Run towards it, because we know what? We're going to live with our father forever and ever. This life is, it's like a dream that we're going to wake up from someday. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. Therefore rejoice, you heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe to the earth and to the sea, because the devil has gone down to you. And we wonder why this is such a hard plane to live on. The devil lives here with us. He's here. This is his domain. As beautiful as it is, it wasn't originally created for him by any means. Hell was, but not earth. <sighs> He is filled with fury because he knows his time is short. I mean, why are there, um, you know, a thousand abortions a day? Because he is filled with fury and he knows his time is short. I mean, he's going he's gonna to do everything he possibly can to hurt us as long as he can. And our, and our babies in our womb are ob obviously the most vulnerable. And when the dragon saw that he had been hurled to the earth, he pursued the woman. We're back to that sign in the sky again. He pursued the woman who had given birth to the male child. The woman was given the two wings of a great eagle so that she might fly to the place prepared for her in the desert where she would be taken care of for a time, times, and half a time out of the serpent's reach. Then from his mouth, the serpent spewed water like a river to overtake the woman and sweep her away with the torrent. And we've had lots and lots of people have dreams about tsunamis. But the earth helped the woman by opening its mouth and swallowing the water that the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. And we know there are great crevices within the earth and, and even oceans underneath the crust. So there's plenty of room for the earth to open up its mouth and swallow a river. And the dragon was enraged at the woman and went off to make war against the rest of her offspring. Now, who's the rest of her offspring? That's us. That's us. We are the seed of Seth. Right? So he went and he goes off to, he's making war against us right now. We're in a war. Those who obey God's commandments and hold to the testimony of Jesus, Messiah. And the dragon just stood on the shore of the sea. All right, and we'll stop there at chapter 13. It's really just getting interesting. So we'll come back with a bang. Yahuwah bless you and keep you. And he make his angels to stand guard above you, to guide you, to guard you, to protect you always. And I want to say if there was a man here to pray, I would let him pray. I would ask him to pray. But there is no man here. It's just you and me. So pray with me. Father, be with us. And guide us and guard us and teach us your ways and feed us with your word and with your living water so that we may live forever with you. Amen. See you next time. <laughs>